Hello, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sean Blackwell. I'm a professor and chair of, for the Department of Obstetrics, uh, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the McGovern Medical School, UT Health. So I'm frequently being asked, um, are pregnant women more susceptible or at a higher risk of developing COVID-19? Historically, we've thought that pregnant women and women after birth are at a higher risk of getting sick with a pneumonia, or flu-like um, situations similar to when we had the prior epidemic with H1N1. The good news here is that we do have a small amount of reassuring information related to COVID and pregnant women. To the best information that we have, the majority of women that get exposed to COVID or develop an infection with COVID do really well. They don't get super sick and the mortality rate is really very, very low. In fact, the largest risk of death and severe respiratory complications really occur in the adult population of people over 60 that have major medical problems. So right now, um, the information that we have is reassuring. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't have really strong diligence about protecting pregnant women and having smart practices, but it's not a doom and gloom amount of information. One of the things that we worry about is if mom gets exposed to COVID or develops a COVID-like infection, how could that affect um, her unborn baby um, as he or she develops? Right now, to the best information that we have, is the majority of women that get exposed to COVID um, are gonna have a very mild illness. It's a flu-like illness where they may d develop fevers, cough, shortness of breath, but they don't develop real severe respiratory symptoms such as pneumonia or other major life-threatening conditions and having to come into ICUs. We don't have a lot of data in testing babies shortly after birth with moms who developed an infection, but right now it does not seem that the COVID virus is in high amounts um, in the amniotic fluid, in the fetal blood, or doesn't get into the baby before birth. Now this may change as we get more data from these reports, but right now the chances of mom passing on the infection um, to uh, her baby while the baby is still in utero seems to be very low. One of the most important things that we can do um, is encourage our patients to breastfeed. But in the middle of this COVID um, pandemic, the question is, is it safe? If somebody develops a clear COVID infection or test positive for COVID, we're still recommending mom to be able to breastfeed. Uh, we're recommending a mom a pump and save the milk and then we would um, give the baby a bottle separately. Um, or mom would breastfeed using the personal protective equipment in isolation. And we're kind of handling that on a case by case basis. So overall, breastfeeding is good. We think breastfeeding is safe, and the current information that we have is, is that we still should encourage and carry it out. So there's a lot of questions um, uh, that I'm being asked um, are, how do, how do I say safe? I'm pregnant or I'm postpartum and I've got a newborn. Do I need to do something different um, compared to everybody else? The reality is the instructions and the guidance that we're getting for um, adults that are not pregnant are probably the same things that we should do. Uh, pregnant women should definitely um, avoid people that are sick. We should probably use uh, warm soap and water aggressively. We should probably use hand sanitizers. We should probably avoid really large crowds. Uh, just in the same way that we're thinking about that with adults and with children. I doubt that the guidance will change for pregnant women compared to non-pregnancy, so we should probably follow those guides and I think that's the best thing to do. So I'm constantly being asked, what do I do if I start getting sick? And um, the first thing you should do is pick up the phone and call your doctor, your nurse, your midwife, or other healthcare professional, and um, over the phone, talk with them about what's going on. You should um, take your temperature, see if you're febrile, Talk to your healthcare provider about the severity of your symptoms. If you are really having trouble breathing, can't walk from one room to another, 
are having a productive cough. Those are symptoms that suggest that you are having more of a moderate to more severe medical situation as opposed to a mild situation. And that's why it's really important to call and talk to your healthcare provider. One of the other things that um, we're having to make adjustments to are um, who can come and see me when I'm in the hospital and who are the other people that come and see me and my baby when I get home. All of the hospitals are having to take steps to minimize the number of visitors that can come into the hospital in order to minimize community spread. So that means the hospitals are restricting the number of visitors to either one or two or potentially zero, depending on which hospital and what else is going on. And that can be very isolating. And that's not what we think about when we're thinking about the family aspects of birth. But that's something that we've got to deal with. You know, certainly, you know, trying to get electronics involved with FaceTime, get on the phone, doing other things with your iPads, anything to improve communication back and forth if you're feeling isolated is something that we, you know, we're really trying to encourage and trying to do some workarounds for. Once you get home, you also, I think, have to be smart about who can and can't come to see you and your newborn baby. I'm probably less worried about pregnant women and children getting an infection. Uh, I'm worried about your grandparents or your elderly family members being exposed to us. Young people, pregnant moms and children may be asymptomatic carriers if this community spread happens quite a bit. So we need to be conscious of that with our grandparents um, and our other uh, family members who are adults over 50 or 60. So I do think that we have to be smart about that and to be conscious about the risk to them. To the best information available, there is not an increased risk of miscarriage, pregnancy loss, stillbirth, or um, birth defects. Um, in women who are exposed to COVID or who develop a COVID infection. So that's good news. Uh, the challenge is, is that we don't have a lot of information and the, the scientific information that's being published is rapidly evolving, but so far that we, 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 we have information that is reassuring. Listen to your doctor. Listen to your nurse. Listen to your midwife. Go to websites that have sound scientific information. Go to the CDC website. Go to the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology webpage. That's going to give you the best medical information. If you hear something, it makes you worried pick up the phone and call your healthcare provider and go straight to the source and they'll give you the best, most reliable information that you have.